Hey, we're ready to start our first day of online chemistry. Isn't that exciting? Um, we're moving on to chapter 14. If you remember, we were supposed to go back to quantum mechanics, but I think we probably should do that in person. And so we're going to chapter 14 on gas laws, which was going to be our last chapter of the year, but we can adapt. Um, remember, I mentioned this in class also. The textbook company is made by stupid people, apparently. And it's chapter 14, but the PowerPoints and worksheets are labeled chapter 12. I guess they didn't change their file names, whatever. But you'll see in the um, uh, in Google Classroom, I labeled the, the whole lesson chapter 14. But inside that, you'll see PowerPoints and worksheets labeled chapter 12. Ignore that number. They're stupid. Um, your homework for tonight after you watch this cool video of me talking um, is going to be page 454, numbers 1 through 8. I'll put that in text in the, the mainstream. But let's get started. Um, for today, we're going to do section 1 of the chapter, which is basically just a real quick overview of what gases are like since we're doing the gas laws. And um, we'll talk about kinetic molecular theory, theory about molecules moving around and blah, blah. So, um, the cutesy little example they give at the beginning of any question, every chapter, and we don't care about. Um, gases are very compressible, as opposed to solids and liquids. Um, compressible means you can squeeze it into a smaller volume. There's the term compressibility. They treat you like you're in third grade. Um, so, um, the main reason gases are compressible is because the molecules are really, really spread out. Um, in solids and liquids, the atoms molecules are packed tightly together. They have nowhere to go. In a gas, they're scattered way far apart. Um, if I were to draw one molecule on the, the whiteboard, which I don't have now, but you can visualize it, um, the next one would be probably in Mr. Bossert's room somewhere. Um, so I can't even draw two on the same board. They're so far apart if I drew it to scale. Um, so there's that. Um, they give you some cutesy pictures, but again, notice in all the pictures that we show you for this kind of stuff, the, um, the molecules are really greatly exaggerated in size. Um, if these blue and red molecules were actually drawn to scale, they'd be smaller than one pixel. You wouldn't be able to see them. So just keep that in mind. The spaces between these are going to be ridiculously huge compared to the size of the molecules themselves. And, okay, well, I'm not even going to dignify that question on this slide with an answer because it's dumb. Now, here's where we get into some uh, some more important stuff. Um, the pressure of a gas. Um, there, um, we're gonna, um, our first gas law is going to deal with pressure, so we're going to look at that in closer detail. Uh, what factors cause it to have higher or lower pressure? Um, there's really four major properties when we're talking about a gas that we mathematically want to find or, and that are going to relate to each other. They're listed right here. The amount of gas, which of course, this is chemistry, so that's measured in moles. The volume of the gas in liters, which you've already seen the 22.4 thing for one mole of gas. So you see how these two quantities are already related. But you'll recall we always had that little you know, disclaimer at STP. That's the other two properties that are going to matter, the temperature and the pressure. Temperatures in kelvins, you already know all about that. Um, pressure is in a unit called pascals. Um, since most gases have very high numbers of pascals of pressure, we often use kilopascals as our, as our convenient unit. Um, there's also other units called tors or atmospheres, which your book doesn't hit on, so we'll avoid those for now. But those are the four quantities we're going to be looking at. The amount of gas in moles, the volume of the gas in liters, the temperature of the gas has to be in kelvins, can't use Celsius, and we don't use the F word in here. Um, and the pressure has got to be in kilopascals, which is the only unit of pressure you really know at this point. So, um, blah, blah. Now, they use this term for the first time, kinetic molecular theory. They didn't put the word molecular in there, but it should be. Um, kinetic molecular theory is our theory explaining why gases and solids and liquids behave the way they do. Um, your textbook does a terrible job explaining this, 
So I'm going to leave their PowerPoint behind for a moment and go into one that I made for my honors class a little while back, just so you can see just this one slide. Um, kinetic molecular theory basically has some major assumptions that it makes. Um, first of all, since we already established gas molecules are separated by huge distances, um, I guess I can ambiguify this. Um, uh, separated by huge distances. So for all practical purposes, we can assume that they have no size. The, mo the molecules themselves have a size of zero or they're geometric points. We call those point masses. Okay, so kinetic molecular theory basically states that molecules are point masses. They're infinitely small. That's not true. They actually have size, but the size is so small we can ignore it in our, in our math. And trust me, it makes the math a lot easier. The other assumption we make is that the molecules are in constant random motion. They're constantly moving around, bouncing off each other. Obviously, when they collide in the real world, when um, billiard balls collide, they lose energy in those collisions. Molecules can't do that. Otherwise, they would have all slowed down to a stop and we'd all be at absolute zero. We know that's not true. Uh, so we stipulate that all collisions between molecules are perfectly elastic. Um, that's just a physics term to mean no energy is lost in the collisions. So not really important to us. When you take physics, you'll learn more about that. And I'm sure you'll love it. Um, a big assumption we make with, with kinetic molecular theory is that there's no forces between the molecules. Gases won't attract, or gas molecules won't attract or repel each other. Again, that's not entirely true. In the real world, they do interact with each other and that will eventually lead them to liquefy or solidify. Um, we're going to assume gases are what we call ideal gases, and they don't have those forces. When you account for those real-world forces, you see deviations from ideal behavior. Again, that's something for you to worry about when you take AP Chem next year. Um, here's a cute little animation kind of showing what's going on. Um, you have blue and red molecules, don't really matter what they are. Once again, note that they're extremely exaggerated in size. Um, they're, again, if they were to scale, you wouldn't be able to see them even in this animation. But you see how they're constantly moving around, bouncing off each other, changing their speeds as they go. Um, so if you look at any particular, say, red molecule, you see it speeding up and slowing. Oops, let me restart it. Speeding up and slowing down as it collides with other molecules. Recall when we defined temperature way, way back, it's the average kinetic energy of the molecules. You take one of those molecules, yeah, it has whatever kinetic energy it has based on its velocity, but it's slowing down, speeding up, other molecules are changing. You can't really get a specific value, so you take the average over the whole sample. And that's ultimately how you get uh, the temperature. I'm done with that video. Um, the pressure um, has to do with how when they hit the walls, which on that video you saw them bouncing off the, the side of the, the screen. Every time they bounce off the side of the screen, the wall of the container, that's pressure applied on the container. Clearly, you can see if they're moving faster, higher temperature, they're going to produce more pressure. If you have more moles of gas in there, there's more collisions, more pressure. You get the idea. Now back to the actual textbook PowerPoint. We can finish this up real quickly and get on with our lives. Oops, from current slide, that's where we are. Um, notice they're showing here that on the left, there's a few molecules and the pressure is low. On the right, there's more molecules, pressure is high. So there you go. <laughs> and then too much pressure and you blow it up. Um, let's see here. Uh, changing the volume will affect the pressure. Notice on the right, I've decreased the volume of the gases, of, of the gas. The molecules are pushed closer together. They have more collisions, more pressure. Temperature we already talked about. On the right, they're moving faster, hitting the walls harder. Again, more pressure. This is easy stuff. And again, they blew up the container. All right, so I'm not, again, you can answer that question if you like. It's a dumb question. You're not idiots. You don't need to be shown that. And that kind of is the abridged oh, version of the PowerPoint. 
key concepts. Notice again that the symbols for the variables, amount of gas, number of moles is N, volume is V, temperature is T, pressure is P. And it's important they all have to be in the right units. You may not use temperature in degrees Celsius. Your volume must be in liters. If I give you milliliters, which I'm going to do, you know that, you're going to have to convert to liters. Um, pressure, I'll give you in kilopascals um, because I haven't taught you how to do conversions with the other units yet. We'll deal with that another time if we get around to it. Okay, that's it for section one of the chapter. That was quick, easy background stuff. Again, I'll, I'll uh, list the homework problems I mentioned in the beginning anyway for you to do tonight. Submit those you know, before you go to bed tonight. I'll check them tomorrow morning. And then tomorrow we will start on some math with Boyle's Law. Have fun.